if we're really and truly thinking about our grandchildren, we don't want to hand them a planet that is less habitable than it is at this point in time. We're near Harrodsburg, Kentucky. We're three miles from Pleasant Hill, 20 miles from Lexington. I'm Bill Slater. We call this Clean Acres Farm, and Clean Acres Farm uh, is clean acres because we do a organic food production. We raise organic vegetables and poultry. And uh, another uh, dimension to clean acres is that we have clean energy. We're aspiring to become a net zero farm and getting clean energy sources is priceless. We had great hopes for our wind turbine that we installed a year ago this month. And uh, this is the wind turbine here. This was one of the first in Kentucky for home use. It's a 10 kilowatt wind turbine, a 140 foot tower. We are going to put in a nine kilowatt solar array just adjacent to the wind turbine out here. In fact, we've already laid the wire uh, to the house, which is a heavy wire to uh, prevent voltage drop from the solar array. And the motivation to do this is, uh, you know, it's personal. Uh, we've always uh, wanted to uh, decrease our carbon footprint, and we also want to demonstrate to people that this can be done. And I think people look at it as a dollar and cents kind of uh, thing. So all of the energy that we uh, generate uh, is tied to the grid. We use the energy that we generate here first, and if we need more than that, we can draw from the grid. And conversely, if we use less than what we produce, the grid gives us credit for our household. The wind energy is old science. Well, so here we are some 18 months later. What we've got is the sunniest spot, a south-facing hillside. This is uh, oriented to maximize efficiency. The solar array wire I showed you back at that time in May of 2011 is now buried in the ground, connected to uh, these three arrays of 28 320 watt panels. We're averaging about 23 kilowatt hours a day on these. And the wind turbine is generating about 16 kilowatt hours a day. We've had them up and running for about 17 months now. So we have a pretty good measurement of the amount of energy that we have generated. We've also saved 18 tons of CO2 just on the solar panels alone. And we know this because the inverter that is installed in the basement of our house keeps track of CO2 that is saved. It gives us a reading on how much energy we have generated over the entire time that we've owned the panels. And also it uh, gives us the uh, energy being generated in real time as we speak. This is possible for anybody who wants to uh, have a solar energy system, a photovoltaic system in Kentucky. The net metering law, which is the law that uh, sets up how the system is tied to the grid, it puts a limitation on how big the system can be. The net metering law in Kentucky puts a cap of 30 kilowatts on the uh, size of the system. Anything uh, more than that, if you generate more than that, it would be compensated at a very low uh, rate. Whereas in Ohio, for instance, there is no such cap. If you wanted to have a 100 kilowatt system, you could have one. Uh, in uh, Indiana, 2,000 uh, kilowatts. And generally, 2,000 kilowatts is what most states have. But in Kentucky, we have a very restrictive uh, cap of uh, 30 kilowatts. The wind turbine and the solar panels all run on one meter and uh, combined we're at about 20 kilowatts right now. So we could add another 10 kilowatts to this and another 10 kilowatts would be another uh, set of 28 panels like this because this is about 10 kilowatts here. The turbine is a 10 kilowatt turbine and uh, you know, uh, why would we want to do that if we wanted to run heating in a greenhouse, uh, for instance, or if we wanted to add uh, other uh, features that run on electricity uh, to our farm, uh, you know, we would uh, easily eclipse 30 kilowatts. 
that cap for net metering is a impediment to doing business. And so we could say, well, jobs are moving uh, to Ohio in this case and to Indiana as well. And I know that's a concern uh, to, uh, to anyone who's uh, interested in freedom and uh, interested in increasing uh, jobs. As far as the installation of this goes, it took about three weeks and we were up and running. For anybody that's thinking about doing a solar system, you want to make sure that your installer is NABCEP certified, North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners. That's a mouthful, but it's NABCEP. And they came back for follow-up, taking readings, and have been available to us demonstrating that this can be done and getting the energy for our farm from clean energy sources is really important to us. If an old man plants a tree, the old man won't see the tree, won't see it mature, but nevertheless there's nothing to discourage an old man from planting a tree.